Hello, I am Sneha Koshi and the big story that we have been following, the sports minister is currently meeting with the protesting wrestlers. Around 10 of them are right now at the sports minister's residence. This critical meeting, which was not scheduled earlier on, and uh, the minister had told the media that he's out of Delhi and will meet these protesting wrestlers as soon as he returns to Delhi. Eventually, he cut short his trip and returned to his home just minutes before 10 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, he has met the protesting wrestlers. It's day two of the protests of these wrestlers who have who moved out to Jantar Mantar on Wednesday with scathing allegations against the Wrestling Federation of India's president as well as the coaches. Allegations include allegations of sexual harassment, abuse, dictatorial behavior, no professional support among many others. Let's listen to what the sports minister had said a while ago. I will say that the players <laughs> have been in the और उसका संज्ञान लेते हुए भारत सरकार ने खेल मंत्रालय ने तुरंत कार्रवाई करते हुए रेसलिंग फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडिया को नोटिस भी दिया 72 घंटे के अंदर जवाब भी मांगा है और इसके अलावा जो कैंप लगना था उसको भी पोस्टपोन कर दिया गया है प्रभावी रूप से और हम सदा खिलाड़ियों से पहले भी मिलते रहे और आज भी मेरा प्रयास है कि मैं वापस आकर खिलाड़ियों से मिलूंगा ताकि उनकी बात को सुन भी सके और जो उचित कार्रवाई होगी वो भी करेंगे। Well, I'm being joined by my colleague Rika, who is right outside the sports minister's residence. Rika, and not only a historic protest in many ways by the wrestling by our wrestling champions, but also a very crucial meet underway at the sports minister's residence. Well, uh, Sneha, government is on a queer pitch at the moment because on one hand, it's their prestige. It, it is the image of the country because several top names are involved like Bajrang Punya, Sakshi Malik, Ravi Daya, all of whom are Olympic medalists as well as uh, uh, Asian Games gold medalist Vinesh Fogart. On the other side, there is a very powerful BJP politician on whom much of BJP's hopes hinge for the 2024 elections. But in 2023 March, uh, the Wrestling Federation comes up for elections, which is when Bridge Bhushan Sharan Singh automatically goes because he has done his term of 12 years. However, at this point, at this critical juncture, several allegations have been made against him, which the government has taken into account. Uh, the, the problem here is that there are no FIRs registered against Bridge Bhushan Sharan Singh saying what the government can do if they are not satisfied with the explanation that's given by the WFI at this moment is they can ban the association. They can post the, a committee of administrators and then have the elections. But directly the government can't seek for um, uh, a resignation of Bridge Bush and Sharan Singh. That has to be done through Indian Olympic Association. The, uh, the Federation has to be banned. All of this can come into play once after 72 hours. The explanation from WFI comes. What we do understand is that the, the, the sports ministry and the entire uh, you know, sporting ecosystem is quite aggrieved with the allegations that have been put against the WFI president. A crucial meeting is going on inside for at least last one hour between uh, uh, sports minister Anurag Thakur and uh, several um, wrestlers who have gone in, all the key wrestlers of the country. There are stories that uh, Anurag Thakur wants uh, uh, Bridgewish and Sharan Singh to resign, but at this moment he is defined. He said, I'm not going to resign till the charges are proven against me. So it will be an interesting battle uh, between uh, the wrestlers and the federation going forward. We'll have to see who blinks first. Right, Rika, and uh, I believe we'll just let you go at this point. There's some crucial information coming in uh, from the meeting that is underway and you need to get your sources to confirm that. 
so go ahead we'll be waiting for the update from you a important meeting underway with the sports minister of the rest protesting wrestlers and uh, some key decision likely to come out of this meeting scathing allegations by the protesting wrestlers these are the indian champions who have won laurels and medals for india in several key championships um let's just quickly uh, move on to other news as of now well swati malival the chief of delhi commission for women was allegedly harassed on the road she was dragged by a drunk driver for 15 meters in the early hours of thursday a 47 year old man has been arrested ms maliwal was allegedly harassed dragged near the aims hospital in delhi when she was out on the streets for court and court a reality check on the safety of women in the capital we keep doing inspections and this inspection was very different because generally we inspect dark spots we inspect uh, pcr uh, vehicles we inspect uh, tickets police tickets but this time i just decided that let me stand alone on the streets of delhi on the main road of delhi rather arterial road of delhi and just let me understand what does a woman have to go through in this uh, city when she is all alone it happened with me it will happen with any other woman i can guarantee you there were other people in my team and i realized that even they were being uh, similar incidents happened with them and i think any delhi girl can tell that this is a very common thing if you get caught right. um, you know in the midst of any delhi road beyond a particular uh, hour then things will happen to you which are really really horrible and in what seems to be a another story of another politician again having what is being seen as a loose mouth madhya pradesh panchayat and rural development minister mahendra singh sisodia has stirred a controversy as he warns congress functionaries in the state asking them to join the ruling bhartiya janata party or face the threat of demolition by court and court chief ministers bulldozer a video of the minister making the remarks at a public meeting has gone viral this these comments were made on wednesday अनुराग अनफॉर्चुनेटली अनादर एडिशन टू वॉट इज बींग सीन नाउ एज अ बुलडोजर पॉलिटिक्स Yes, uh, Raghavard is the former chief minister of the Gila Singh Dam, and Jayawardena Singh is presently the second time sitting in the front seat, uh, which in the past was represented by his father and uncle both. Jayawardena too was present at the civic polls rally today, but uh, yesterday, uh, uh, rural development and Panchayati Raj uh, Minister Mahendra uh, Sisodia. did a controversy by asking congress functionaries in the state to join the ruling bjp or face the threat of demolition by the chief ministers bulldozer and uh, the video of uh, his statement is making the rounds today and uh, 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 you know uh, like some other bjp rule states uh, the administration has been bulldozing the illegal portions of homes of people accused of various offenses in madhya pradesh and uh, chief minister shivraj singh chauhan who is popularly called as mama uh, uh, he is also referring to you know the uh, as the mama's bulldozer is back uh, in 2023 uh, 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 the assembly polls are due in uh, november or uh, de- december 2023 uh, uh, so as uh, sisodia is referring to the polls also that the bulldozer is ready and now the congress has hit back uh, saying that uh, you know the, the minister's remarks have sullied the image of the bjp and he should exercise restraint in his language uh, congress spokesperson kk mishra has also said that uh, the you know they fought with the britishers the congress fought with the britishers so they are not afraid of uh, any bulldozer right thank you very much anurag dwari for joining us on that 
And in a first, the Supreme Court today made public the government's objections to the elevation of senior advocates as High Court judges, the Delhi High Court and the Madras High Court, as well as its own response to the centre, strongly backing the candidates. The first case involves Saurabh Kirpal, who is, who is uh, an openly gay senior advocate. The government's intelligence agency, the Research and Analysis Wing, cited two reasons opposing Saurabh Kripal's elevation. The fact that he is gay and that his partner is a Swiss national. In its response, a letter signed by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandra Chud and Justices S.K. Kaul and K.M. Joshi says the fact that Saurabh Kripal has been open about his orientation is a matter which goes to his credit. His appointment will provide inclusion and diversity. Also, that his partner is from a friendly nation. In the second case, an IB report had raised objections to the elevation of R. John Satyan in the Madras High Court because he had shared an article critical of Prime Minister Modi. The Supreme Court said this does not impinge on the character or integrity of Mr. Satyan. There's been uh, to and fro and... Uh... Uh, you know, uh, public speaking about uh, the in entire process of appointment of judges. Uh, but I think the Supreme Court Collegium uh, today giving a reasoned argument. And the argument earlier has been uh, from the government that we, uh, we only see the minutes uh, where they say they reiterate a particular position here. For the first time, as you point out, uh, there is a complete transparency in the entire reasoning. What are the issues that have been raised, for example, in Saurabh Kripal's case by the RAW, by the law minister, and how they have pointedly responded and signed by all three judges of the Collegium, reiterating that position uh, that they would like uh, Justice Kripal, uh, despite his sexual orientation, despite having a partner from Switzerland, uh, despite uh, the uh, home, uh, the law uh, minister pointing about uh, homosexuality uh, and the uh, and the possibility of having uh, a, a not a correct opinion in terms of outlook. The government today strongly condemned a BBC series on Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the 2002 Gujarat riots as a quote-unquote propaganda piece designed to push a discredited narrative that shouldn't be dignified with statements on it. The BBC's two-part series goes into the 2002 Gujarat riots and Prime Minister's alleged role in it. Let me just make it very clear. We think this is a, a propaganda piece uh, designed to push a particular discredited narrative. Um, the bias, a lack of objectivity, and frankly a continuing colonial mindset is blatantly visible. If anything, uh, this film or documentary is a reflection on the agency and individuals that are peddling uh, this narrative again. Uh, it makes us wonder whether um, about the purpose of this exercise and the agenda behind it. And frankly, we do not wish to dignify such efforts. And defending Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the British Parliament, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak distanced himself from the BBC documentary series, saying he doesn't agree with the characterization of his Indian counterpart. Mr. Sunak made these remarks on the documentary that was raised in the British Parliament by Pakistan origin MP Imran Hussain. Mr. Speaker, last night the BBC revealed the Foreign Office knew the extent of Narendra Modi's involvement in the Gujarat massacre that paved the way for the persecution of Muslims and other minorities we see in India today. Mr Speaker, the UK government's position on this has been clear and long-standing and, and hasn't changed. Of course, we don't tolerate persecution where it appears anywhere, but I'm not sure I agree at all with the characterisation that the Honourable Gentleman has put forward. And it's time for a short break. Welcome back and in the news that seemed to have shocked many across the world, Jacinda Ardern is set to step down as the New Zealand Prime Minister. This will happen on the 7th of February. The reason she gives her tank isn't full enough. We give all that we can for as long as we can and then it's time. And for me, it's time. An announcement that took the world by surprise. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern resigning from the top job, saying she didn't have enough in the tank to continue. She will step down as Prime Minister by the 7th of February. I'm not leaving because it was hard. Had that been the case, 
I probably would have departed two months into the job. Over the last five years, Ardern was a much celebrated leader, the youngest woman prime minister ever at the age of 37. She continued to be a trailblazer for women in leadership positions, becoming only the second woman head of government to have a baby while in office. Ardern carried her then three-month-old daughter inside the hall of the UN General Assembly, the first such appearance by a baby in the organization's history. If someone's Ardern also by... won widespread praise for her response to the March 2019 Christchurch attacks. She was also lauded by many for her handling of the COVID pandemic. I'm entering now my sixth year in office. And for each of these years, I have given my absolute all. I believe that leading a country is the most privileged job anyone could ever have, but also one of the more challenging. You cannot and should not do it unless you have a full tank, plus a bit in reserve for those unexpected challenges. For almost a year, her party has pulled behind the centre-right National Party. Local sentiment towards the government has soured as their country emerges from a long period of pandemic isolation. New Zealand is also grappling with inflation, rising interest rates and housing affordability issues. It's also facing localised problems such as a string of raids and robberies that have led to perceptions among some voters that Ardern's administration is soft on crime. While internationally Jacinda Ardern's star power has endured, at home her fall in popularity has been steady. Even though polling over recent months has placed the Ardern-led Labour Party slightly behind the opposition, the National Party, Ardern says her decline in the polls is not behind the decision to leave. Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. And hundreds of thousands of protesters were demonstra demonstrating in Paris and other French cities on Thursday against proposed pension changes that would push back the retirement age. French workers would have to work longer before receiving a pension under the new rules with the nominal retirement age rising from 62 to 64.